Willie Bell Dudley. And I was born in 1924, November the 23rd. So if I live to see November the 23rd, I'll be 91 years old. today. All right, I got four daughters. The oldest one got seven children. The next one got six children. The next one got four children. And the next one got three children living. Which had four. And out of the great grands, oh boy, there it goes again. No, I can't, I can't name them all how many exactly when it comes to the great grands. Because mm -mm, I can't think of everybody's name all that one time. But I, I can say it's 43 great great grand. And at least I know it's four great greats, but I also got some, some others I would, that are God children that are great greats too. So we thank the Lord for all of that. And all the God children. Oh my, I don't know how many of them the name that I got, but Pearl, she got two boys. Then her son got two daughters, which is great, great grands. And oh, I had to go around. There's too many folks to go around to all of them. I done forgot some of them. So I ain't gonna try to call all of them names because I be done forgot so many of them. Mm -hmm. And then the other ones say, oh, she didn't call my name. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, my daughter Cindy, she called me this morning and me and her been on the phone for a long time. And uh, so we're looking to see her pretty soon. And she was intending to be up here this weekend, but she had that rash broke out on her arms and so she <laughs> can't come right now. So I was born out in Holy Neck community in, out, out of Mariana. And up in Mariana, Florida, in Holy Neck community, in the Dudley Quarters, they call it. Where all it and then all it was six houses on a line, and every one of them was a sister or brother. The first one was a soaking, and that was my my daddy's sister. And the next one was a pilot, which was his old my daddy's oldest sister. And then the next was our house, which was where my daddy's place. And now. Uh, he, I don't know exactly where he was in the in the bunch because it was about his parents had about 16 children, so it was a lot of them. And I had one aunt in the bunch; she had 16 children, and uh, so they, we had it was a big family of the Dudleys. And uh, but anyhow, next to our our home place, say Uncle Uncle John LC's. Godfather and his uncle. Okay, next was Uncle Lewis. And then next Aunt Fanny's place was in between, but they didn't have a house on. Aunt Flora had a place in, but she didn't have a house on. Next Uncle Zach. And he lived to get 99 years old. But he was the hunter. And he always farmed with an ox. And uh, he had he had eight children. So me and me and my youngest brother, after my dad got killed when I was three, then he was like my dad to me, to me and my youngest brother. And so we were like his two children too. So we were very, very close with, with them. And so we when when they got ready to feed their children, they fed us just like we were family, uh, his own children. So he always felt so close to us. 
when he when they got ready to feed the children, he always said, Ma, feed the children. That's what he called his wife. Ma, feed the children. And that, that mean feed them all. Don't don't treat don't mistreat them, don't leave now now. And uh, so we had a great time together, great years together. My mother was named Maggie Bell at first, which is Susan Small's uh, 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 mother's sister. My, her mother was named Susan Bell and Jim Bell, their parents. And that was my grandparents on my mother's side. But then after my mother got married, then she married my dad. And he was named Jim Dudley after some of the older head in the family. But he was named Tim Dudley and uh, a man stabbed him to death one Sunday morning. And uh, so, and that's how he got killed. Man killed him. And I was three years old when that happened. And uh, so I never, my mother did marry a later years, but they never did, they didn't stay together that long. But she still raised us up and was with us. And back in the business, when I was the last one she called to the bed. And uh, when I went there, there the checker, and she said, she said, uh, uh, I said, one of y'all boys come help my mama up. I said, because I was pregnant with my oldest daughter, six months pregnant with her. And when they come to help her up, and so for her to get my eyes off of her looking right at her when she left she said Willie is the top in the way long then people used old old-fashioned slop jar with a lead to him and she said Willie is the top in the way and I looked down to see if the top was in the way and then and I said no the top ain't in the way and when I looked up her eyes was going up look like and now uh, she didn't say another word and I said y'all lay her down lay her down and they laid her down and she was gone and just 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 went right on out just like that. So then me and my two oldest brothers, they was the one handling her. I was standing there looking out when she went on out. But she wanted to get my eyes off of her when she knew her eyes was going up and she didn't want me to be looking at her when that happened. And so when she had me to look down and I'm looking for the top. When I look back, she was just about gone, and I had him to lay her down, but she never said another word. So, um, and so anyway, we all still children. We was together. I had got married, but I was married six months before she passed away. And uh, so after then, my first child was born at exactly seven months to the date we married. She's a seven-month child. And uh, so we, we was, at one time we were scared we were going to lose her, but the Lord still brought her through because she got real sick. She got so small, she was a small baby when she was born, but she got so small you could be holding her. It didn't even feel like you had a, a child in your hand. And, and, uh, what's the name of your oldest child? Yeah, she, she's my what's, oldest What's child. her name? Eldest Andrew now, but it was L.S. At that time, they give uh, a, another old lady, she give her the name of L.S. Bowden. Well, she was from Camelton, and she knew her, and she wanted to, her to have the name L.S., and she named her that, my grand, uh, her grandmother, on her dad's side. And then after that, when she started the school, they said she needed a name instead of just a uh, initial. And then they give her the name of Eldest Andrew. Yeah. So that's why they, she's named Eldest Andrew. But a lot of people still call her L.S. Because that was what she was first named when she was coming up from young. Well, my Thank oldest you. brother, he was named Theodore Roosevelt Dudley. My next brother was named John T. Uh, Dudley. And he was... Uh, he was pretty well, he, he loved it to cook too. He, he, and, uh, and the youngest one was named King David, which was the baby boy. And, uh, but he was kind of smart and a lot of different things, but he was the only one that um, was able to go in service. Back in the beginning, he got rattlesnake bit when he was nine years old. And uh, he went to the hospital and everything, but he got all right, because my Aunt Amelia, she knowed uh, snake weed, 
And she went out in the woods and got some of that and boiled it and put his feet in it. And uh, when it was it when that then it was he was bit right long now. And that poison started coming out. And she was they, they and when they got him to the hospital they didn't get it that was about nine o'clock in the morning. But they didn't get him to the hospital till about sundown that evening. And uh, the doctor told him when they got it, they said, y'all had to keep doing what you're doing. You could have got all the poison out because y'all just about got all the poison out. So it never did pass his knee, the poison did But he was the only one of the brothers that was able to go to the service. And so he went in service and served in the service and then he came out. And by that time, when he came out of the service, Annie Mae was my baby when he came out to serve it. And uh, when he come, when he showed up coming from serving, and he, uh, we was in the field, he just waved out. He said, I'm going to the house where the baby. <laughs> when he got to the house where the baby was, then we all went to the house and he enjoyed the baby. But then later years, after he got married and everything, he was driving a cement truck. And uh, he went to unload, he had done unloaded for that day on his job and he went to clean out his truck. And he had emptied the cement on somebody's driveway. And he got out to look at it to see about leveling it out or something. But anyhow, he had, he had high blood pressure. And he, the pressure went up and he fell face down into the cement. And a little child saw him. And he said, Daddy, look at that man out there that fell in that mud. And he went and got him out. And they was on their way to the hospital with him. And uh, they didn't fasten him down in the ambulance. And the ambulance had an accident. And he hit the front of the ambulance. And that's what killed him. So Who's that's your my, brother? Mm -hmm, my youngest brother. He what's got his name? King David Dudley. King David and so he Dudley. got killed in, in the ambulance service. So, but other, the other, John, he, he, uh, he died of cancer of regular causes, and my oldest brother did too. But the last time my brother, oldest brother, he lived in Dade City. So when he came to St. Pete, where I was, he told my cousin, he said, I want you to cook and fix dinner, which was Joe Russ and Inez Russ, uh, our cousin. And he, she, he told her, he said, I want you to fix dinner for us today. He said, I want Willie to ride around with me today. And said, because I don't know whether I get a chance to come back over or not. And sure enough, he never did make it back over. Oh, he passed away. So, and uh, his son was in prison in Dade City. So when we went over for his funeral, the Lord laid it on my heart to, uh, he said, I had, because I have a license. And he laid it on my heart, he said, Go to the, say, ask where is the prisoner at here? And I asked them, and they said, that is it right down now. So I said, oh, I want to go by there and speak to Jane. And so they said, well, you ready to let you? I said, oh, yeah, all I got to do is present a card. And so when we went there and I just present my card, they said, come in. And so I went and they brought him out where I can talk to him and everything. So I talked to him, and after I got through talking to him, then I told him, I said, I'm going to pray for you. I said, when the Lord release you, because he was in there for a long time, and I done forgot whether it was for life or for so many years, but I know it was for a long time. I said, now, I'm going to pray for you. I said, and when the Lord release you, you come straight to St. Pete. I said, and then uh, you're going to need a probation officer. I said, I'm going to be your probation officer. I said, but I will not write not one lie for you. I said, now if you do things that you know you're not supposed to do, you have to go back. And I said, but if you do what's right, you will stay on the ground. And sure enough, I never had to scold him, never had to get angry with him, not one time. And he lived it out for the five years I was in the probation office. I don't think he killed the person or something, but I don't know exactly how the case was like that. But I know that he was in prison for supposed been in there for a long time. But then he, when they let him out on uh, probation, then I told him they would go, the Lord let me know they were gonna let him out on probation. And I told him <coughs> while I was there. I said, when they let you out, you come to me. I said, I'm gonna be your probation officer. 
So I was his probation officer. This little card, I can take it and go to the prisoner and ask to go in and speak to whoever and they are honor that little car. And I can go in and talk to whoever I want to and pray for them and come out. So we thank the Lord for that. When my husband was ordained a deacon and they ordained me at the same time, then I passed in St. Pete. Then he licensed me to be a licensed speaker for the church, a licensed person for the church, missionary. So a uh, licensed teacher, that's what I am, a licensed teacher for the church. My grandparents, um, I didn't know my, my father's parents, which was Lance Dudley, and I can't think of what his wife would name not Craig now. But my on my mother's side, her mother was named Susan Bell, and her father was named Jim Bell. Okay. So they was, I knew them real well. Well, we, I lived years, back in the business, I had married before they passed away. So I didn't, I didn't know my great grandfather, okay. my, no. Okay. That was my, grand, my grandmother's brother, okay, okay. Milton. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so the only, the only grandparents that I know was Susan, uh, Susan Bell and Jim Bell, and uh, then I had I have a lot of other relatives and friends around. And so who else could you? Because uh, really, when I think of how, how many generations, oh, uh, I could. Well, really, it's five of generations now living, right? And then my mother and her mother generation. So I I really know seven generations of my family. Well, it's a blessing. It is. Yeah, it sure is it's a great blessing. I never had too many bad situations. Well, I went through something too with somebody giving me something in some cake that it made me so sick I didn't think I'd live three more days. They didn't think so either. But the Lord still got me here. And, and but what? When I, when I got so sick that I didn't think I was gonna live the next three days, I said, Lord, if you take me now, who gonna take care of my little girls? Who gonna take care of my little children? And that's when the Lord showed me one of my aunts come to me in a dream. And she said, you gonna mess right around and be right where Flora is. But Flora died with some of the same kind of witchcraft stuff. And this was what he was trying to tell me, you don't need to be in that. If you don't do something about it though, you gonna go to. And so I said, Lord, what do I need to do? He showed me, he sent her right back to me in a dream. And he began to have her to explain to me what she needed to do for me. And when she did, I, I saw her on a Friday night that's when she told me I was going to mess right around and be right where Flora is. On Saturday night, no, it must be on Thursday night, and on Friday night, I saw her come to and stood at my bed and told me what I needed to do. Then on Saturday night, she began to show me, I saw her again. I said, Lord, if she can do me some good, don't let me send for her. You send her to me. And, uh, that on Saturday night, when he showed her to me on Saturday night, what she could do to get me over what I was going through. And he said on Sunday evening, he sent her to me. And just like she stood to the foot of my bed on Saturday night in the dream, she stood there on Sunday evening and told me the same. And she said, if you want to want your husband, you want to be all right. Send your husband to my house Monday morning that he can be back here time enough. She said, I'm going to make you a tea. And that he be back in time enough that you drink three swallows at straight up 12 o'clock. And my husband got up and he went and he come all the way over here on the Bumpno Road. And it was a long way round. And I, yeah, that's close to 50 miles. But he did it on the wagon, mule and wagon. But he come and got back to the house. And I took when I took the first three swallows, 
whatever it was was in that piece of cake it had stopped right up in my chest see like but when i took them first three swallows it went right on out and i had to hurry to the bathroom but after that it was just like I was a new person. The next day, they was even having to hound me. I couldn't even get up and walk by myself. They was having to hound me to get up on the pot and whatever. But then that Tuesday morning, I was able to go back to walking again. And when some of them see me, the lady who had gave me the cake, when she saw me walking again, she got scared to come straight to my house. Mm -hmm. She'd come around through the past and come up to my house. And then when uh, and cross the, when I see her, she'd be coming across the road. So when I told my aunt about it, she said, the next time you see her coming, get you two handful of table salt. She said, and if, she, if you rain it out on her, just throw it out. And when I did that, after that, I had no more trouble with that. And I've been gone ever since. But the Lord let me know definitely. When, when you read about witchcraft in the Bible and everything, it is real. And people do do rich, witchcraft, and people do lost their life because of a lot of it. And uh, I'm a witness of that. But since then, the Lord has really brought me and He blessed me with all my brothers to come and we all, that them that lasted, and uh, we had great fun together. We enjoyed, I always enjoyed my children. And I always enjoy, this is one of the greatest things the Lord has blessed me with. Anytime I see any of my family come and go, it's with joy and great joy and enjoying each other. And I never had to scold them. I never had to get angry with them. And I tell you, when I seen your mama this morning, I tell you, when we see each other, not like we want to eat each other or something, but we just love each other. Yes, I'm yes, telling yes, you. Yes. But I tell you, and when I remember a long time ago, she she came and we was all in Satellite Beach, I believe we were. And she said, y'all, wait, I got something to say. Everybody hush. And she said, you all has, has showed me so much love. Till she said, I never had a family just like this and I just love everybody. You all have proved something to me. And ever since that day, I tell you, it looked like we can't get enough of hugging each other. <laughs> Amen. So, Amen. And I tell you, I'm always glad I just thank the Lord for what he has done and how he has done. Because I tell you, when the Lord is in control, everything got to work out right. Amen. It's got to work out Amen. right. Amen. And so I tell y'all, be of good courage mm -hmm. and keep on keeping on. Stay in love with each other, no matter what go or what come. Love is what makes everything Go all right. Amen. Am I right? Yes, you are. I know. Oh, yes. I know I'm right. Because I've come a long way and I ain't stopped. He ain't stopped me yet. And I just praise him. And he gave me a, a vision the other night. One of the beautiful visions I ever had. And I was in a place. And it would look like you seen all these here little spots and different colors of stuff look like crystal and everything. How pretty, some real pretty crystal. Mm -hmm. I was in that place and looked like, ooh, everywhere I looked, it was just crystal all around. I said, oh Lord, I love this. I just love it. And I tell y'all what, once I leave here, don't y'all worry. I know where I'm going. Where that place is, where all that beautiful crystal. And oh goodness gracious. Oh, it makes you feel good, don't it? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for it all. Oh, when you know what you know. I tell y'all, and if you ain't got it right, get it right while you got a chance. Because I tell you, he's all right. It's all right. It's all right. And I just praise the Lord for you. Coming to do all of this. And I hope I hope somebody will get a joy out of it. But I tell you what they don't know how much joy I get yeah I enjoyed and uh, I had a younger brother than I am 
and me and him, we fought him about every day, but we really couldn't get along without each other, and we were very close to one another. And the day before I got married, that was the day I beat him and sent him home to Mama. And Mama said, I, I thought she'd beat you after a while. And then she said, now go right back and do what she said do. And that's when he, we never fought no more after that. And that. But we broke up our fighting the day before I got married. Oh, and so. You played basketball, didn't you? Huh? You, you play basketball with him? You play basketball yeah. when you growing up? Oh yeah, I play basketball. Oh yeah, I had to kind of dance come out. I tried uh -oh. to learn uh -oh. that. Oh, oh yeah, I when I didn't want to go to school, but I mostly wanted to go to school to learn how to dance. <laughs> and, uh, and when, <laughs> when the, the recess was out, if it had a new dance come out, and I boy, you, the, the teacher said he could tell where where I was at because he said he see a crowd gathered around and it, well, I was showing them how to do all kind of different dance and that new dance come out. I learned how to do any kind of dance break come out and now and then married a man did not want me to dance. How about that one? That cut that off right there. <laughs> but anyhow I, I was a tomboy coming up because I had all I was raised with boys. I didn't have a sister. And if they climbed the tree, I climbed the tree too. <laughs> and uh, my uncle was digging a well, dug us a well and everything. And I went out there and was standing out there, and me and my brother I was next to. And we was there, I said, Everybody done been down that way. I sure do want to go down that way. It was deep, you know what I mean? My uncle down in that day. And, Working in the well, and that time I showed the woman put down in it. And uh, my mother saw me out there standing out there with them and everything, and she know I was subject to go down there. And she said, You all, you better not be going down in that well. I didn't say nothing. I said, All right. Otherwise, my brother John said, He said, You really want to go down there? I said, I sure do. He said, Pull off your clothes, I'm going to put on your clothes, and you put on mine. <laughs> <laughs> I put it <laughs> We changed clothes right quick. And boy, they put me on that bucket, let me on down in that well. And I went down in that well and stood around in there. And I said, okay, now take me back up. And my man never know where I went down in the well. <laughs> <laughs> and my brothers did, and I felt like I could do it too. Wow. Uh -huh. <laughs> so my, my husband had bought a, a, young, a young mule. And he was breaking that, broke him in some, and but he, him and that mule had so much. Trouble. I said, let me, let me plot this mule some. I started handling that mule. A lot of time he couldn't get up to the mule. I had to get up to the mule for him to put the brow on him when he got out or something like that. But that, that mule. Yeah, he used to run away so much, but I got to where that mule calmed down. When I went to handling that mule, that mule calmed down so till the churl could even handle him. Yeah, but uh, they just, he just, he just, no, he did, he didn't, and when I could say, whoa, uh, what was his name? Prince. What? Prince. Prince. Prince, yeah. I said, whoa, Prince, stand right there, just a, just as nice, just like if he sure was. He was a beautiful, ooh, could run, he sure could run. But anyhow, we, we had a great time together and everything of the kind. I had a great life. You know, I had a great life raising my children and we all got along so great together. I really enjoyed them. I really enjoyed them. So I can't complain. I, I tell you, I can't complain. I just thank the Lord for where he brought me. And now that I can look down through all the different generations and how he have brought them and yet with so much love and so much wisdom and understanding and then and he still take them to higher heights and deeper depths in him and everything that's the greatest thing and the most of them that i know they love to go to go to the house of god and seek the lord and search to do his will his will must be done and i continue to i want to continue encouraging as long as i'm here do what the Lord would have you to do, and he would take care of the rest. And I praise the Lord for you. You're doing a great job, so keep it up. I stopped, I think, in the seventh grade, but I didn't finish the seventh grade. I stopped in the seventh grade. I didn't like to go to school. <laughs>
<laughs> I, I didn't like to go to school, but I liked it to get me a crowd and we dance and sang and cut up and carry on. We just had a lot of fun. I always had a lot of fun with people. I've always all down through the year. And uh, even uh, when I was in St. Pete, uh, Cindy's mother, she had them big parties and everything. Boy, they didn't think it was right if they didn't see me at the party. Oh, yeah. And they'd be dancing and we would, I was ready with them. You know, we had all these different things going on. So I've been, now I've been all up north and with them, Virginia, and different places and everything. And she was, me and her was talking about last night, one of the dogs she had. And when he when he goes thunder and lightning, he just loved to get out there and just run. He was a big old dog, and he'd just be barking and running and going on. And you you just keep right on out there. I ain't coming out there to get you. I go I go get in the house and sit down somewhere. Uh uh. But anyhow, we had a great time together down through the years, and so I'm still enjoying her and everything, my goddaughter. And so, but I has I has another. A group of people too that uh, I have two, three white goddaughters, and uh, the other two is named her, the oldest one named uh, oh the test girls Michelle and uh, what is her sister name? Oh, Jen, Jen, Jenny, Jenny, Jenny and Michelle. Now they they we had a lot of fun with them too and. It, Michelle, she had it so bad, she'd be had toting her little doll and baby, and when she get to the house, if she didn't want to go back home that night, she just gonna get on in the bed with her boots and shoes. And she loved to go wear boots. She'd get right on in the bed with her boots and all on. Her mama said, well, I guess we must have gonna spend the night because Michelle and I got in the bed. I said, take off her clothes and maybe we all three of us get on in there and sleep together and everything. Anytime I was at their house and it's still that way, and I'm at their house, it's like I'm home. And when they're at my house, they have to take their home. So I just hope and pray one day they get a chance to come up to see me. Mm -hmm. But all the rest, the, the others that we was real close to, they, they've been up here, but the Tessas hadn't been up here. They're still in St. Petersburg? Huh? St. Petersburg? Uh-huh. They're still in St. Petersburg. Mm -hmm. But they join great. So I, I moved out in 69 and I came back in 209. So those nines, and then my part of my social security number is nine. So uh, nine just follows me around. <laughs> when I was 16 years old, I got married. I stayed married for 35 years, and uh, to the same man. So I can't complain. I thank the Lord for everything. So. I only been married once, and I don't expect to be married again. <laughs> <laughs> and then I learned to drive after I got to St. Pete. So then I drive back and then power home. Then after I met another guy, and, and after my husband passed away, and then he was, the Lord sent him to me for for me to get for us to get married, but he he was. He had never been so used to somebody being so nice to him and everything and helping him to get different nice things until he just went wild and everything and Lord let cancer had happened to him. He got healed of it through us going to church and everything and they praying for him and everything. Then after he got healed that time instead of keeping on with the Lord like he should, he went to going running back in the street and everything, the Lord let it come back again. When it come back that time, it carried him out for it. So whenever the Lord heal you or something, he heal you for a reason and a purpose, to do a work for him. And if you don't do it, he said, when when it come back, worse things can happen to you. And that, that scripture, when you go to search in the scripture, it said, when he over, you overcome it one time, but if, he, if it comes back, worst thing can happen. I just can't praise the Lord enough for my family because they is so good to me and I can't ask for any better. I can't ask for any better for all of, all of my children and if one daughter can't don't take me the other one take me and I just I thank the Lord and then that one just come in right now and I'll be asking her is we going tomorrow? <laughs> 
And she said, we gonna go early in the, the morning. morning. So, where you going? Where you going? Grashville. Oh, oh we be getting all these good food oh, and everything. You like bro. to go to my father's closet? <laughs> yeah, I like to go to my father's closet and get food. And I bring it back and be giving it to different people and feeding people and helping people to get better and everything. And I tell you, they be getting fatter too, and but we have a we have a lot of fun. And so my oldest daughter, we, she used to pick me up at six o'clock. So Ooh. oh yeah, she'd be right down at six o'clock. I'd be on that. You call me after six o'clock on Tuesday morning, then it's just too bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she be gone. And you know, I just thank the Lord for yeah. all the years that He have taken care of me. I've never had to spend a night in a hospital yet. I've never had no kind of surgery on me yet. And I have all my limbs and I'm still working, working on a baby blanket yes. now. Yeah. Tell us yeah. about that blanket, so, Grant. I'm telling you. So <laughs> I'm trying to. Hide your face. Okay, pull it down. Tell them about, tell them about the blanket quilt, the baby quilt. Yeah, that, this is a baby quilt for Miss Kelly, Lula Kelly, great grandson. And uh, but then look at this quilt over there. See if anybody holding that up. See if y'all want somebody to go. But I think I know who's gonna want that. Cause I know I got one in the family. He love all kind of different stuff like that. And uh, so that looks like Philip. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I'm hoping he gonna soon be coming, which um, he'll probably be. But y'all see all them different names and all them different spots in there for different yeah. things. And, but what y'all think of that? That's lovely. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. All right. But I, I don't know. I can't tell y'all how many quilts and how many blankets I've uh, made down through the years because I, I can't keep count of them. But every time I look around, somebody else is coming and getting one. One of the ministers came last week from St. Pete. And uh, he carried one back, he bought one kid back with him when he went back then. So um, so that's what I do days while I'm here doing, I like this shop. And I, I don't shop as much now because I ain't got too much room to put it, but I still do enough. <laughs> and I had to keep them toting some out in all the time. <laughs> have room fun to put it in. So I can when I forget something else and everything, but you know they just keep me in plenty of food and everything. <coughs> See that got a little apple juice sitting down there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mary had to catch some home yesterday, and <laughs> you know, every time one come that, and you know what? It'd be so much they can't tote it out. I had to carry my buggy, I had to load it on my buggy for them to take it out. So, so I'm telling you, girl, right. <laughs> if y'all get if y'all get hungry, y'all just need to stop by. <laughs> and then, and then we go tomorrow and come back. Y'all definitely need to stop by. Yes, I tell you, the Lord just blesses. He has pulls out His blessing. I can't complain. I I will not complain. Of all the things I can tell you all to do, stay with the Lord and keep love and peace among you all, because that is the greatest thing. Love covers a multitude of sin. And if you've got love in you, you can go through it. You can keep love one with the other. But if you go getting hate built up in you, you need to seek the Lord with all your heart. Because he is not a, he's not a person that, that, that hate. He don't love hate. He love love. He is love. And I just thank God for you all coming and doing what you're doing. But y'all keep love one for the other and keep on keeping on. Oh, she got, I mean, she got it together, has she? She sure does, so nice. yeah. Mm -hmm. You got some smart grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Great grand, that's a great grand. What? I have to think that's my <laughs> grand baby. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's your, yeah. your grand and my great yes. grand baby. Yes, ma'am. I'm telling you. You want to hold your baby over there? Oh my God! You ain't gonna holler. So you see me with my yes, thumb I see you. I see you to throw me in your mouth. Okay. okay. We are gonna lay you aside. So you oh, won't. All cry. right. I take it now. <laughs> Y'all said so. Thoughts about life. 
Cause a bad like in a time of bad. Cause a bad like in a time of bad. He's a shelter in a time of storm. He's almighty and he is true. B, he's a baby like I knew. C is for Christ. The sense for water in it knows every stream. X, he can save you to the full extreme. U is for you and it is for me. Z is for the son of the Zebedee. He's a Balak. In the time of battle. He's a Balak. In the time of battle. He's a Balak. In the time of battle. He's a shelter in the time of a storm. If you never hear me sing no more, meet me over on the Christian show. I got the Holy Ghost in my soul. Is better felt than it is told. He's a bad lag. In the time of bad. He's a bad lag. In the time of bad. He's a bad lag. In the time of bad. He's a shelter in the time of a storm. Oh, sorry, the last part got messed up. Seeing this out, Granny. Okay, thank you. I love you. I love you too. Hey, how you doing? <laughs>